I have, you know, cucumber, uh, you name it, you name it, anything that is like a cash crop, I try to plant it in my backyard so that I have. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Before I go any further, please remember to subscribe to my channel and to share my YouTube video and hit that notification bell that you'll be notified every time I put a new video out. Well, you know, I baked some loaves yesterday and I'm just going to have two loaves and the rest I'm not going to eat. And the thought came to me that I should really talk about food insecurities in Jamaica. Because sometimes you have the food that you are not eating, you don't want it anymore and you throw it out. And it feels so, it makes me feel so guilty to throw away food when other people could eat it. But I can't pack cook food in a package and send it to Jamaica. So, you know, that's understandable. I excuse myself there. But when we talk about food insecurity, we are really talking about the ability of food and also the means, the ability to access food. You know, it, it really took most of my life to understand food insecurities in Jamaica. I really thought the issue was other countries, but not in Jamaica. But with the COVID-19 pandemic, when I really started watching YouTube videos, and I was shocked to see all the charity that was going around, and some people couldn't even find their first meals, you know? And it, it was really, really shocking to me some of them if they do find the first meal they couldn't find the second meal and on top of all this on top of all this the rising cost of food food due to the pandemic this just added a whole new insult to the whole situation you know, the other day I was listening to the CAC talking about how people can navigate around the crisis by, um, by a meal plan, with a meal plan. And if they were eating two meals a day, they eat, they eat a smaller amount. But if a person does not have what to eat, how can they navigate around a meal plan? To me, Jamaica is a land of wood and water, right? And my father was a farmer, and he was a very successful one too. So when people cannot grow things to eat, it's like shocking to me. But maybe the opportunity that I got growing up with my father being a farmer, raised us from farming, and believe we, we never went to bed hungry, we had three meals, not only three meals, we had four meals a day because we had supper after dinner. But many people didn't have the same opportunity. It was just because I grew up on the farm and my father was a known joke farm. He farmed very big. So um, there was always food, always food for us, always food for like the pigs and and they all came from farming and he had this 24 seven right round the clock all year round. So because of this, I knew and I learned from an early age that I can grow things to eat because I used to do play farm. We used to do play farm where we would just farm our little stuff and I didn't even know that yam is a, takes 12 months. So we would go and we would dig up. And I remember once I planted, um, my sister and I planted peas and 
my mother was able to go to the market and sell that piece and we got money from it and we were like little kids so i knew that but some people don't know it because they didn't grow up on a farm or anything and in this country moving to this country in the u.s i always grow something in my backyard or i used to put them in i remember when i moved the first my first gardening was just in pots and I grew callaloo. I still have the callaloo seeds growing wild all over the place now. I grew the callaloo in the pots. And I was almost every day I was able to cut callaloo. So it's kind of, you know, I, I'm, I don't know. I have mixed feelings when, you know, people can't grow what they eat. Sometimes people need to be pushed towards this direction instead of telling people to come up with some kind of a meal plan get the callaloo seeds distribute callaloo seeds distribute um topsoil or in jamaica you don't even need topsoil actually so the callaloo seeds and teach people how to grow things in their in their pots because not everyone has backyards some people rent places but they do like flowers. And instead of um, growing potted flowers, you can maybe grow some in a pot, um, tomatoes, callaloo, those things, and light like a scallion, because if you have callaloo, you don't need anything else. So I think maybe some people need the push and the help to do this. It's very, very sad. When, when I look on the TV and when I see people suffering, some of them have two, three, four kids. The kids not, can't, don't have anything to eat. And it is so easy. It is so very easy to grow. I mean, they still would have to maybe buy rice or, or yam or something like that. But for like meat, they can easily grow callaloo. They can grow tomatoes. You know, they can grow scallion. So maybe, maybe this is a solution, kind of a solution to the food crisis for so many people in Jamaica right now. You know, help them to do something, educate them. Because it's hard when kids go to bed hungry. It's very, very hard for kids to go to bed hungry. And if you're going to tell someone that they should come up with some kind of a meal plan, they don't have what to do meal plan. I used to think it's um, starvation. I have to practically start starvation because if you go to bed without a meal, I can't go a whole day without a meal and I cannot imagine someone going to bed not eating for a day or two right there in Jamaica. For I'm more sympathetic, I'm really more sympathetic with people who don't really have anywhere to grow things. But if you live in the country and you have a piece of land, it's very easy to grow things on there that you don't have to go hungry. They call it the cash crop. You know, I am from Manchester. We don't do much cash crop. We are like yam and bananas. And I, my father used to grow sugar cane, but for some reason he had stopped growing sugar cane. I don't know if it's not, it wasn't profitable. We had bananas, but we didn't sell the bananas. So he more focused on yam. But anyway, and not everybody know how, not everybody in Jamaica can grow yams. Not everybody in Jamaica can grow bananas because they don't have anywhere to grow bananas. But every single individual in Jamaica can plant some callaloo in a pot. And this thing spreads so much, it keeps coming up. The seed goes down, it keeps coming up because I do it here every year. And callaloo has become like wild weed to me. I just have to keep pulling it up, pulling it up. So, 
um, we need the maybe what the government need to do is you know uh, you know I'm watching um, a charity somewhere else in some other country where the gentleman he gave them food but he also gave them seeds and sometimes he also the people who do the donate donations that he has going around and donating things for people give them um, seeds there's also another ch charity in Jamaica. I'm not going to be calling her name. Um, maybe I could say Shan, Shan Zen Zen, something like that. I noticed she kind of encourages people to do a little, you know, farming, you know. So, you know, these are some of the things that we, um, I don't live in Jamaica. I don't run a charity. You know, I just talk about things that I see in Jamaica, things that, you know, can be changed or, you know, um, I, I'm just voicing my opinion because I don't live there and I'm not involved in any charity. But, um, but and some of these charities anyway, they, they don't know about these things that they can do it because some of them weren't, as I say, weren't as lucky as myself because in this summer i don't buy anything like i don't buy any form of seasoning i don't buy tomatoes i don't buy scallion i don't buy um onions um i don't buy vegetables i have lettuce i have um tomato i have every type of seasoning you can think of i even have um lemongrass you know, like the lemongrass, I have to take that in in the winter time and, you know, just take a little stalk of it, plant it in a vase, and then I replant it in the, in the summertime. So, 